Hello everybody, um, we are starting chapter 2 today, you guys probably just finished up chapter 1, took your test today, I hope you did well on that, I hope you prepared for it, um, and, and we're moving on, so let's, let's take a look at some chapter 2 material. First we have uh, our vocab words, now remember, if, if we're talking about vocab words and then you have to do vocabulary for, for your homework, well where are you going to find those words? right here in your notes. So try to refer back to your notes as much as possible. That's why we're taking it. So, a relation. A relation is, what we're talking about is relations and functions. A relation is basically uh, a function that we haven't proved to be a function yet. And so there are inputs and outputs is the big part that you need to know with that. Inputs and outputs. And not necessarily a function yet, but could be. A domain would be all the inputs, like generally what we call the X number, and the range would be all the outputs. And a function is a relation, com comparing X's and Y's, a relation which has one y for every one x. One y for every one x. An equation in two variables would be equations that have x's and y's. And a linear function is like y equals mx plus b you guys have seen before. That's the equation for a line, right? Okay. Representing relations. There's a lot of different ways to do it. We can have ordered pairs. So we've seen before. Remember, the x is the first number and the y is the second number. We can have a table. A t table is what we call it most of the time because it looks like a t, right? We can have a graph, which is where we take those points and we graph them. Or the one that we probably haven't seen much of is called the mapping diagram. And these are just the X's over in one box and the Y's, and then you, you just draw arrows between them. So let's start by looking at that mapping diagram so you can kind of see what's happening. What I would do personally with the mapping diagram is I would rewrite them as, as ordered pairs so I know what I'm looking at. So in this one I have negative two, negative one, as one of my points. Negative one, zero as one of my points. Three, zero as one of my points. And six, four as one of my points. Okay, so those are, those are all of your points. The relation is a function because it's map because every input is mapped onto exactly one Output. Now, I know you're onto one, number one, what's going to go in there? One output. But take a look at B here. Now, on B, we have the points negative two, negative two, one, zero, but then we have two, two, and two, three. That's a problem, the two, two, and the two, three. Okay? Because every x doesn't have exactly one y, all right, that's a problem. This x has two y's. So this relation is not, not a function because the input 2 is mapped onto 2 and 3. Now I know you're looking over here and you're saying, well, well Mr. Matt, look at this right here. The negative 1 goes to 0 and 3 goes to 0. It's okay that. The y, the, as long as each x is mapped to uh, only one y, that's okay. This, this x over here was mapped onto two y's, so that's a problem. Is this a function? Negative 5, 2, negative 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 5. Take a moment, pause it, and just write yes or no. Tell me what you think. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you put no. Why no? Because of these right here. That zero is mapped onto three different y's and that's not going to work out. 
All right, the vertical line test right here is my, my vertical line, okay? If the vertical line doesn't cross in more than one place, then we have a function. So if I take my vertical line over here, look at how it's crossing that line in two places. So that's not a function. So function, not a function, okay? So that's, that's how the vertical line test works. We take a vertical line, a vertical line, one that goes up and down. Remember Mountain Dew said get vertical. Remember those are all commercials about people going crazy high in the air and stuff. So, or the horizon is, is, you know, from left to right. So vertical line is up to down and it can't cross in two points. Let me show you that one more time. If I put that vertical line on there, we have where the graph crossed it here and here, and that is a no-no. All right, so on this one, the question is, 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 the relation, is the relation represented by the graph a function or not a function? Well, that's why I need my vertical line test. Is there any time when my vertical line goes across here that it crosses more than one point? And if I say no, then I say it does represent a function because no vertical line intersects the line at more than one point. Okay? If I look at B over here, and I bring my vertical line back out, looking pretty, oh, got a problem right there, right? Another problem right there. So I have this problem right here and right here that it crosses in two points. So what we're talking about is does not, does not represent a function because the vertical line at x is three and at x is 6. That's a problem, you know, x can't go to two different places, right? Let's, shoot, let's get this guy out of here. Let's get that out of there. Now, right. graphing equations in two variables. Um, first thing you're going to do is construct a table of values, and that's, you know, like when we did in 6th, 7th grade, we made a t-table, right? And you're going to plot enough points from the table to recognize a pattern, or as my children call it, pattern. Look, Daddy, there's a pattern. And then you're going to connect all of the dots with a line or a curve. Okay, so let's take a look at what that might look like on example three here. Okay, on example three, we have this equation. And to find out my y's, all I'm going to do is, is take my x number, plug it into the x, and see what I get. So on the first one there, I would have negative 2 times negative 2, which would be my x value, minus 2. Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, minus 2 is 2. So that's a 2 right there. Okay. When I plug a negative 1 in there, I get negative 2 times negative 1. That's a positive 2, minus 2. I get a 0. When I put a zero in there, you get zero minus two is negative two. And some of us right now, because this is linear, are already seeing a pattern. Two, zero, negative two. It's going down by two. So hopefully you see that's negative four and that's negative six. So you see your, see your pattern happening here, okay? If I go to plot my points, I have negative two, two. I have a point right here. I have a point at negative one, zero. I have a point at 0, negative 2, I have a point at 1, negative 4, and look, looky, 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 I got a line going through there, so this thing is a line, and so I would connect all my points with a line, okay? Alright, example 4. Tell whether the function is linear, then evaluate the function when x equals negative 3. Well, let's take a look. Does this look like a line? Yeah, it's, it's to the first power, so it's linear. x is to the first power. Does this look like a line? No, that's going to be a curve. That's quadratic. So that's a problem. Okay. So on A, the function um, is linear. Sorry, linear. 
and if I put in a point, the point negative 3, f of negative 3, and how I read that is f of negative 3, so every time I see an x, I put in the negative 3. Um, it's, it's the same thing I would do over here if I was trying to find g of 5. Every time I saw an x, I would put in a 5. So for some of us, that's that takes a little refreshing. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Plus 10 is negative 8. And so I found a point. Um, the function g of x is not linear. Not linear because it is it has that right there. That exponent is what threw us off. Not linear. And if I wanted to find g of negative 3, I'd put negative 3 in right here. Okay? Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Minus 1. We're adding all that together. And we're going to end up with 5. For an answer. You go ahead and do the next uh, couple of checkpoints and see how you do. Alright, hopefully you pause this. Um, hopefully on this first one you brought your linear, your line, or your pencil across it. Oh, look, da 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 da, -da. function. Alright. On the next one, I hope you drew a line. And some of you remember the y equals mx plus b, and you said, oh, well, b on this one would be negative 3. And the slope is 2, so I'm going to go up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1. Now, if you didn't do that, maybe you had another way to do it. You drew a line through there. I hope you found a way that works for you. Take a look at this number 4 down here, linear or not linear. Well, because of that, because of that 3 right there, we have not linear. So you got that. And then when you put your negative 1 in there, negative 1 cubed was negative 1 still. So you had negative 1 times 2 was negative 2 plus 6. Plus 6 is 4. And, and then it, you had 4 minus negative 1. So like plus 1, you had a 5 for an answer. And on number 5, I hope you saw that this was a line therefore linear, because it makes a line. And then when you put negative 1 in there, you got negative 4 plus 9 plus 5 again. Okay, well that was section 2-1. Thanks folks, I appreciate you hanging out with me today.